Hello everyone, welcome to the Oyster Mushroom Expert channel. Today we're continuing our exploration of why oyster mushrooms can develop elongated thick stems. I've already analyzed a case involving poor airflow in a small grow tent and there's a link to that video in the comment section below. Today, let's take a look at a larger grow room. Measuring about two and a half meters by five meters or eight by 16 feet. This room is designed to hold 240 five kilogram or 11 pound bags. At the moment, only 36 bags are being used and the grower is puzzled as to why reducing the CO2 levels to between seven and 800 parts per million hasn't made any difference. As you can see from this set of photos, two strains of oyster mushrooms are growing here. The king blue strain is shown on the top row and the gray dove strain is on the bottom. A quick online search will show you that these strains require different temperature and humidity levels. The king blue thrives at higher temperatures and humidity and is very tolerant of elevated CO2 levels. It's clear from the photo that the king blue is performing much better than the gray dove. The gray dove doesn't look at all like it should. The cap should not be so thin and its stems should not be so long. The humidity in this room ranges between 88 and 95% relative humidity. That's high for both strains, but particularly detrimental to the gray dove when combined with the elevated CO2 levels. There's also a variety of lion's mane here called Bull's Bear's Head or Heresium Americanum. I'm not familiar with its specific growing parameters, but based on online sources, it seems that the current humidity levels in the room might actually suit it quite well. Let's review the mistakes one by one following the email sent by the grower. The CO2 sensor is down low near the floor. Many people believe that CO2 accumulates near the floor because it is heavier than air. However, in a grow room, Air circulation tends to distribute the CO2 relatively evenly throughout the space. Even more surprising is the phenomenon where in high humidity conditions, the CO2 gets trapped in the warm air and rises along with it, especially in rooms with high ceilings. If your ceilings are higher than four and a half meters or about 15 feet and you have a CO2 sensor, Try measuring the gas levels at different heights. If you find that the CO2 level is indeed highest near the ceiling, install an exhaust fan closer to the ceiling and observe how it affects the quality of your mushrooms. However, the highest CO2 levels will be found near the mushroom clusters themselves. One of my clients has allowed me to share a video where we checked the CO2 levels together. This grow room is large with ducting in the rows and the air is blown through diffuser caps down toward the floor. In the video, you'll see a sensor hanging one and a half meters or about five feet off the ground, quite far from the mushroom bags. It shows a CO2 level of 822 parts per million. When the grower placed the sensor directly between the mushrooms, the reading jumped to between 1500 and 1600 parts per million. This clearly demonstrates that mushrooms release a significant amount of CO2 as they grow. This particular grow room already had a good airflow, but the diffuser caps were spaced too far apart. The grower has since installed a new duct system with the diffuser cap spaced 60 centimeters or about 24 inches apart. Oyster mushrooms require a steady airflow to remove the CO2 and excess moisture from the clusters. Now let's get back to the original grow room. The author writes, seeing the thick stems, I changed to 700 to 800 parts per million of CO2 and 80 to 95% humidity, but no real change. In addition to the CO2 sensor placed near the floor, not providing accurate readings, as we discussed earlier, the humidity is also too high for oyster mushrooms. The combination of elevated CO2 and high humidity has affected the gray dove strain so severely that the shape of the mushrooms that have already grown will not improve, even if the CO2 level is reduced. 
if the airflow was stronger and the humidity lower, new mushrooms might grow more attractively. However, let's return to the email. Fresh air comes in from high and exhausts low in the opposite corner when CO2 triggers incoming and outgoing fans. Oyster mushrooms need constant air circulation. Even if you use a CO2 sensor to control the intake of fresh air, a practice I don't recommend, you still need a fan running continuously to circulate air within the room. In grow rooms around five meters, or about 16 and a half feet long or larger, the fan should push air into a duct and the airflow should be evenly distributed through diffuser caps. I'll likely create a separate video about where to position exhaust fans in large grow rooms, but I think you've already guessed it's not at floor level. I recommend installing an exhaust fan at least one and a half meters or about five feet above the floor. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. We post new videos regularly so you can learn much more about growing from your oyster mushroom expert. See you next time.